Good morning. This is Pastor Tim Wells, pastor of Cross of Christ Lutheran Church in Aurora, Nebraska. For those of you who live in the Aurora slash Hamilton County community, I think you're aware of some tragic events that took place earlier this week. First Tuesday night, uh, a local teacher at Hampton Schools uh, was tragically killed in an accident involving a high-speed car chase and just an innocent victim at the wrong place, wrong time. And a lot of people mourning his loss, hurting, grieving. And then the next morning, Wednesday morning, one of our students at Aurora High School lost her dad in a car accident. And I know a lot of people who've been grieving the losses of loved ones the last few months. I, we've, in our bulletin, uh, it seems that we always have two or three names that, that we're praying for their friends and family every week. It's in light of those tragedies and in light of that real grief and that real pain that I want to point us to our epistle reading for this coming Sunday, which comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 15. I'm not going to read the whole thing. Instead, I'm going to summarize what's going on here. Paul addresses the resurrection. There are people who doubt that there's life after death. They're saying, once we die, that's it. And Paul says this. He says, I want to remind you of the gospel that I've been preaching to you. That gospel can be summarized in, in three parts. First, Jesus died on the cross for our sins. Second, Jesus was buried. And third, Jesus was raised from the dead. Paul then goes on to point us to the many people who had the privilege of being firsthand witnesses to Christ's resurrection. It says, first he appeared to Peter. I gotta find it. Here we go. Then to the other uh, apostles, so to the twelve he calls them. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers at one time, most of whom are still alive. Meaning, for his original audience, if they want first-hand witnesses, they can go find him and talk to him. They appeared to James, then all the apostles, so all those who follow Jesus. And then last, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. And then Paul calls himself the least of all the apostles, because he once persecuted the church. But God has shown Paul grace, and through grace has used Paul to share the gospel with countless people. And the point Paul wants to make is this. The gospel he's been sharing, remember, summarized in three parts. Jesus died, was buried, and rose again. That's the same gospel that's been shared by all those other people. Peter, James, John, all of them. They all shared the same gospel. And here is the point of that same gospel. That Jesus has risen from the dead. Now again, there are people Paul's writing to who don't believe in the resurrection. They're saying, when we die, that's it. And Paul says, if there is no resurrection, then how can we say that Jesus has risen? Not even he could have risen from the dead if no one's going to rise from the dead. And if Jesus hasn't been raised from the dead, Paul says, then I'm a liar. Peter, James, John, we're all liars because we keep telling you that Jesus has indeed risen from the dead. And if Jesus hasn't been raised from the dead, that means that we have no hope. Our hope's in vain. We have nothing to hope for. But I can tell you, Paul says, in fact, that Jesus has been raised from the dead. Because I've seen him. Countless others have seen him. We know without a shadow of a doubt that Jesus is alive. He has been raised from the dead. And if Jesus has been raised from the dead, then we can know without a doubt that someday we too will rise to eternal life. As we find ourselves grieving and hurting, especially in the midst of such tragedies as we've had earlier this week, we find comfort and hope in that reality that Jesus has in fact been raised from the dead. And if Jesus has risen from the dead, and he promises that we too will rise from the dead. Well, we can trust that promise. Which means we can trust 
that we will see the loved ones whom we've lost, we will see them again. Right now we shed tears, right now we grieve, we hurt. But at the same time we have hope, we find comfort in knowing this isn't the end. For those who belong to Jesus, we have a certain hope. That is the certain hope of resurrection life. And why is it that we have this hope? Because we know that in fact, that's the phrase Paul uses, in fact, Jesus has been raised from the dead. Let's pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, Lord, we live in a world in which we witness the reality of sin and its consequence of death each and every day. And Lord, especially this last week, our community has been hit by some unexpected tragic losses and deaths. Lord, we pray for all the family and friends of those who have died, that you would surround them with your presence and give them comfort and hope in the midst of their grief. We pray that you would help us to be there for one another, to suffer together, to love one another in the midst of these difficult times. And we pray, Lord, that you would always give us comfort and hope and even joy in the midst of our grief as we are reminded of your son's resurrection and the promise of our own future resurrections. Lord, strengthen our faith and help us, Lord, never to doubt in the reality of resurrection life. In your name we pray. Amen. I pray God's blessings on your day. And you will hear some of what I said in today's devotion. You'll hear it again this Sunday in the sermon. Uh, because I will talk a little bit about these verses for part of the sermon. Not the whole thing. But some of this will be repeated. But that's okay. Uh, just remember this good news as we go into the weekend. Jesus has, in fact, been raised from the dead. Amen.